Welcome to the Bentley Systems Training Course, where we will show you how to design steel connections in RAM connection for an analyzed RAM structural system model. Now during the connection design process, we will assign connections to the different joints using the RAM connection database of predefined connection templates, which are separated into different connection families. For this video, we will be designing the shear connections for the gravity beam girder joints according to the AISC 16 specification that has already been specified in RAM connection. Now designing connections in RAM connection is a two-step process. You will start by selecting the joints you want to design together, typically joints of the same family and with similar forces and joint data, and then you will select a connection template that is compatible with the currently selected joints. Now I find it easiest to work on one level at a time, so I'm going to go ahead and isolate my first floor level. To access your view tools, go ahead and right click in the main window and select one of the view icons. In the main window, I'm now going to select all of my members at the first floor level, and I'm going to use the hide unselected elements tool and return to my isometric view. Now I'm ready to select my joints. To do that, I'm going to go to the Home tab in the Ribbon Toolbar, click on the Elements icon, and find the Joints option. Now the joints can be selected by one family at a time within RAM Connection. I'm going to ask the program to select all of my beam girder joints. Now all of the members that were imported from RAM Structural System will be color-coded based on whether or not they are gravity or lateral. I know that all of these members are gravity based on their color coding. I can also view their section information if I choose. To do that, I can go to the View tab in the Ribbon Toolbar and ask the program to display the sections for me. Now for this model, all of the beam and girders are wide flange members and will require an appropriate shear connection. In addition to that, several beam girder joints at the first floor level will require a connection template that can accommodate a beam skew angle. And there are several beam girder joints at the roof level that will require a connection template that can accommodate a beam slope angle. Looking at the RAM connection database, I can see that there are several shear connections that will work for this model. Considering this information, I will use the basic single plate template for all of the joints. So let's go ahead and get started with our connection design process. To start, I'm going to click on the Design tab in the Ribbon Toolbar and click on the Assign icon. I'm going to use a basic connection workflow for this video and I'm going to ask the program to design each connection individually. We can see that my filters are already appropriately set based on the types of joints I currently have selected. Here I'm going to select a shear connection. I'm going to go with a single plate connection template and I will click on the assign icon. After the connection assignment process is complete, I'm going to take a look in the notes area at the bottom of this, my screen and I'm going to pay special attention to see if I have any errors or warnings. This would let me know if the connection process was successful or not. Here I can see that no errors or warnings were reported, so I know that a connection template has been assigned to all of the currently selected joints. In the data area, I would also be able to see the particular connection template that was assigned to each of those joints. Let's go ahead and work our way up to the next levels. Once I've isolated the next floor, I'm going to go ahead and select the beam girder joints at this level. To do that, I'm going to use my joint selection tool again and select all of my beam girder joints and then I will repeat the connection assignment process. 
No warnings or errors were reported, so I'm going to go ahead and move up to the next level. I will start by selecting the joints again, and then design the appropriate shear connections. No errors or warnings are reported, so I'm going to finally move up to the last level in my structure. For the roof level, again, I do not have any errors or warnings. Now at this point, a connection template has been assigned to all of the beam girder joints within this model. So let's go ahead and turn the entire model on again. Now after the connection design is complete, the next thing I like to do is to view the status of each individual connection design. To do that, I'm going to go to the View tab of the Ribbon Toolbar. I'm going to ask the program to display the status of the connections for me. While this option is selected, I'm going to ensure that the four controlling combination checkbox is currently selected. Now what we're going to notice is that the design status for each connection that is assigned so far in this model will be reported on screen and they will be color coded based on their design status. Within the design status I do have a legend where I can isolate all of the connections that are either passing, produced errors, or also produced warnings. So here if I go ahead and select the green check mark I can see all of the connections that passed. If I select the red X, I would see any connections where there was an error on design. This means that they failed the code check and are over capacity. I know that no current connections are producing an error on design and the data area is empty. In addition to that, let's go ahead and see if we have any connections with warnings. And again, since the data area is empty, we don't have any warnings on our current model. Now that I've reviewed the status of our connections, I can also review the connection detailing on a connection by connection basis. Let's go ahead and return to the roof level. Now on the roof level, I can see that beam girder connections were assigned to each of the beam girder joints. I'm gonna see a little purple rectangle wherever a connection was successfully assigned. If I would like more information on any connection within the RAM connection interface, I can go ahead and select that connection in the main view window. If I want to edit that connection, I go to the design tab in the ribbon toolbar and click on the edit icon. Now this will display all of the joint and load data along with any of the connection data that was assigned during the connection design process. Now within the connection pad, I can modify the plate type, the plate thickness, material, and all of the bolting and hole size information. I can review this on a 3D generation of that joint or in the DXF view. Now for this particular model, I'm noticing from the DXF view that although the connection did pass all code checks, the detailing of the connection should be customized to ensure that the coping of the beam is appropriate. So let's go ahead and take a look at a few of our options. First thing I'm going to do is take a look at my plate type. Now within the single plate connection types, I have the option to use a standard plate or an extended plate. Let's go ahead and try an extended plate. And we're going to take a look at this checkbox, beam edge inside support flanges. If I unselect this option, this will basically bring this beam out further from within the girder and I can avoid any issues with the coping of the beam and the conflicts it's posing with the top flange of the girder. Now at the top of the connection pad, whenever you make any changes, you're going to notice that your status of your connection design is going to be automatically updated. 
Here I can see that my interaction ratio is still less than 1.0, and it is in green, meaning that I have not produced any warnings or errors during the connection design process. So this would work if this is the way I want to detail this particular connection. Let's go ahead and go back to a standard plate though. Now with a standard plate, I could probably still get this to work, but I may need to adjust the coping of that top flange. So maybe I will bump this up to say one inch, maybe one and a half. And I can see I can now avoid the top flange of that girder. So it's really a personal preference on how I want to detail this joint as long as I am avoiding any conflicts. For this particular model, I'm going to choose to increase the top cope depth, so I'm going to save that parameter. Now before I exit the connection pad, let's go ahead and take a look at the results. Within the results, I'll be able to see all of the design checks that were performed along with a quick link to each of those design checks. If I want some additional information, I can click on the View Formulas icon, which will display all of the equations and code references. Let me go ahead and close out of here. Now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and save this connection design, and we'll go ahead and exit out of the connection pad. At this point, we have completed the process for assigning a shear connection to all of the beam girder joints within RAM connection from an analyzed RAM structural system model. I took some special care for editing the connections at the roof level since those were supporting sloped beams that required some additional coping considerations. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.